All right, hello everybody. This is Shooting Game Weekly, episode number thirty-one, and uh, today is the Cute 'Em Up Showcase. And a uh, bit different than a usual episode. Uh, not going to be um, too concerned about uh, strategies and one CC strats today. We're just going to be having fun, taking a look at the wackiness and the zaniness and uh, the subgenre of shoot 'em ups known as cute em ups and what it basically means is uh, you gotta shoot em up but uh, it, everything is replaced by cute things and in because uh, it's a shoot em up you're usually shooting the cute things therefore it's a cute em up and uh, on this episode I'm uh, being joined by Chibi UFO who is uh, hey. from episode hey. number 10 with UN Squadron and Ordine. it's really glad to have you back Chibi oh, thank you I appreciate it hey guys hope you're all doing well and, uh, yeah, so, I mean, as for this episode, we got a, kind of a list of games that we're going to be going through. Uh, um, as you can see, we got Cotton, uh, Daytona Twinbee, Twinkle Star Sprites, uh, Super Fantasy Zone, Harmful Park, Game Tengoku Paradise, and Plus Alpha, and maybe even some Sexy Parodius. We're probably only going to be spending about maybe 10, maybe 15 minutes on each game, just kind of taking a look and... Uh, saying whatever, you know, Chibi or I have to say about the game, but also just having fun and just uh, kind of laughing at these uh, silly games because they really are, like, they really are pretty cute and awesome. Yeah. And, and I think we'll also be, be showing off what makes them unique as cute must because the funny thing is for the cute up uh, sub-genre of a genre that's already kind of niche in a certain way, uh, we'll be showing off just what makes them interesting because... A lot of the things when it comes to cute em ups, there are some cute em ups that also, besides just being, well, cute em ups, they have some innovation to themselves. Yeah, I mean. They, and I think they, Twinkle Star, yeah. and I think Twinkle Star Sprites will be a perfect example of a cute em up that actually does something very interesting. It's not just like, oh, you're a cute thing, shooting other cute things, go. Yeah, I mean, they, yeah, some of them definitely have some more more going for them than just the the cute aspect, like. Uh, I, I think Twin B, um, probably the main thing about that series was the whole bell, the whole bell juggling yeah. mechanic. Yeah, the sort of bell, the bell sort of juggling system, and I think as each, as each Twin B game, you know, for, continued as more and more Twin B came out, I think Konami did something very interesting in that literally every single became better and better because they would add not so much more features to it, but they'd really redefined what made that last game so good or so interesting and they'd, they'd fix it or they'd perk it up a little bit and it would actually yeah. work really well. And personal little recommendation for anybody, this might sound a little random and silly, but for anybody out there who might have a bit of a crappy day or anything, just do me a favor, go to YouTube or go to wherever you might have a preference for video game music to where you can listen to it. Get some cute up soundtracks because I swear to you, these things will just perk up your day. You'll just feel better. I, I promise <laughs> you. There are some really nice soundtracks that just sound happy and catchy and you just can't help but just feel good about it. Yeah, Seriously. they're they're really feel it's good amazing. games. Like that's probably one of the better parts about them too is like it's even, not just like yeah. cute things and it's not even really the good thing is they're not really annoying about it either. They're just really just nice. They're nice, happy things with games with really good soundtracks. Well most of them are, so yeah. And it's like doesn't everyone love like a, you know an upbeat like cheery video game soundtrack? I Absolutely. mean, everyone loves that type of thing, and Pop it's your like head to it, you can snap your <laughs> fingers to it, you can just do anything. But it's just like you can't help but just love this beat of these these tunes in this game. <laughs> like I wish uh, Umi Harakawa say was a sh was a shmup or a cute em up yeah, because that, that game is <laughs> very cheery music, very happy, cheery. Just you can't help but just kind of just you know go along to the beat or just kind of feel. <laughs> about stuff and even in some of these games the music is almost it's almost too cheery like <laughs> like yeah. it doesn't make sense but it doesn't matter no, sometimes i just like i don't even remember the game i'll just remember that <laughs> specific tune like man that tune was catchy yeah it's like a, it's like doesn't even matter because the music's nice so um yeah, but yeah it's like uh, and then it's like you know it's like you wonder like wh you know why did cute em ups happen like what what is this idea but i think it's i i, I it probably just stems from the fact that Japan is obsessed with cute things. So I think... I think it also, I think it also just stems from a, a one-time sort of a gimmick. It, no. it, it somehow not only caught success, but it just caught into its own little 
sub chain because it was so unique. <clears throat> yeah, I guess like, it was kind of a gimmick like at makes, first, huh? <laughs> yeah, like it seems like oh well, okay, it's a shoot 'em up, but cute things. All right, that could be interesting. Maybe it's maybe to try happens, to appeal then, to uh, female yeah. gamers or something like that. Yeah, either that or, or it kids. could be some sort of like a maybe some sort of a thing like that where they try to pander to a certain audience, and then lo and behold, not only maybe does it well to that maybe certain specific audience, it managed to do well with every sort of gamer because hey that just seems interesting that it's a shoot up but with cute things and the graphics yeah. are a little maybe perkier or maybe a little brighter and the colors to the sprites are brighter yeah and they're more yeah visible. they do tend to be pretty colorful and which is yeah which is definitely a nice thing it, it's definitely yeah very, a very good a... plus for even mm -hmm. the like for any of these games like the graphics and the colors are very well just done just very well done yeah they tend to be all right well uh I think it does pretty good for an intro, so we should probably get into right. some of these games because we do have a lot of them to uh, check out today. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> All right, so we're going to be checking out uh, Cotton first. Uh, it's uh, originally appeared um, on the arcade in uh, 1989, I believe it is. And uh, this yep. one, um, well, we can probably just uh, let it speak for itself once we get it going here. Um, I wonder if... Uh success in Sega really knew what they were going into with this game and how it created its own little mini franchise of these other games that went onto various other consoles and the arcade. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so this, this game, uh, you could, you might be able to say that, uh, this was probably one of the first, uh, gothic, um, kind of cute games. Yeah, almost. Uh, it, it did have some kind of semi-gothic-y tones and, it was interesting how it tried to kind of work with the cute map aspect. Was it, it? Yeah, it's really interesting. Uh, you could probably view uh, this game as like a proto Death Smiles or something like that. Yeah, almost, <laughs> almost. Because uh, it it kind of plays like that. There's a lot like of that. very Death Smilesy sort of style of things to it, like whether it be magic or you know kids who might know magic or using certain parts of magic to shoot things or fly around and that sort of aspect. Yep. All right. Yep. So th this is gonna be Cotton, uh, by Se or, uh, yeah, published by Sega, developed by Success, and uh, I suppose I'll get a countdown going here. Sure. And well, we'll take a look at uh, some Cotton goodness. All right. Three, two, one, click. Yeah. Yeah. So as you can see, uh, the character is already pretty cute. <laughs> yep. She got her little fairy with her. Oh man. And the game has like these little cutscenes throughout the stages, which I find are really, are really awesome. Um, it's kind of serious, but yeah, but, it is. It's kind of interesting how it sort of isn't and is serious. Yeah, it <laughs> is and isn't at the <laughs> at the very same time. I like how this story just kind of starts, like literally evil appeared, and then she just wakes up. She's like, "Oh, I gotta go do this." Oh, jeez. All right, so there. <laughs> I love the I love the eyes there. <laughs> I know. She's just like, wait, what? <laughs> So she's learning about, uh, yeah, the willows, which are like these, basically like orbs she's got to collect to save the world. Um, that is the most 80s anime thing that I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> but uh, it, it turns out that she actually thinks that the willows are, are pieces of candy. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's like, all right, whatever, I'm done here, whatever. So I think we'll probably watch like 10 minutes or so, get to the next cutscene, but uh. <laughs> <laughs> Like, wait, what did you just say there? Come on, tell me. Tell yeah, me where I'm going. just grabs the fairy with a fist. <laughs> he just it all. Just like, all right, now I'm interested. What's up? So yeah, already the game's got pretty good graphics. Oh, this is a color game. There would be games, uh, sprites. I love that you should just. And uh, yeah, once again, if the audio levels are uh, a miss, please let us know. I want to make sure that's good for you guys. Oh, I'm actually going to call Frenetic here. <laughs> All right. Bring that dude in here. 
handle the audio fire and it almost slows the game down near the off and slow down. <laughs> All right, so yeah, uh, in this game, uh, yeah, you get like um, you grab the yellow gems and they power up your main shot. Um, you kind of uh, it's an experience bar down there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, when you grab the yellow gems, every time you uh, fully level up that bar, your shot gets a bit more powerful. Yeah, and you can kind of subtly notice how the shots are getting slightly bigger. Yeah. And then uh, uh change color too. How like at first it was a gray, now it's like a purpley gray. Yep. Yep. So this is cotton. Uh, then, uh, then those bot those bottom right uh, powers. Um, use those by uh, holding. Uh, I believe you have to hold down the shot button, and then you can use one of your special powers. Um, that one right there is a like fire dragon, and then the lightning bolts are like these big lightning blasts, and they're pretty useful. Like they're really useful, actually. Yeah. Then on top I of playing this and using some of those, yeah, they are yeah. useful. Tea time. Oh, um, tea time. <laughs> <laughs> I love that world of almost semi-serious looking enemies now it just goes, oh, tea time, let's relax. We just fought a giant golem head thing, so let's just, you know, drink some tea. Calm down. And now it's a little reversed, where Cotton's mini and that fairy is huge. Yeah, it's very, it's very joking. Alright, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cotton's just like, oh, jeez. She's just obsessed with it. Oh, she wants to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess she just already looks so tuckered out, it's just like, uh We gotta do more of this. You're snatching it. Oh. <laughs> She's so pissed right there. <laughs> I ain't taking any your Todd ain't taking any of your BS. So she's like explaining what they are, but I don't <laughs> think uh I don't think Is her name Cotton? Like I yeah, it is. Okay, Actually, her name's I Cotton, okay. Cotton. She's like, the funny oh. thing is about the Cotton series, that what sort of happened for Cotton series, every single Cotton game is named after a pun with Cotton. Speaking of Cotton, or am I Cotton? Oh, okay. Cotton. Yeah, it's very interesting. Alright, so yeah, you got like. All these kind of weird little guys here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> music's really good in this one, of course. Got it. Yeah. on the instrument, but it's still beating. Clouds. Those are those. Yeah, those clouds are pretty freaky. I like that when you kill them, they have like that big, just like ah face. <laughs> <coughs> that treat makes me think of ghosts and goblins. Yeah, it's reminding me of something else too. I can't, I can't pinpoint it. If you think ghosts and goblins in that one game out of the Three Wonders uh, game from Capcom, there's like a giant tree boss, and you just have to kill it, and then you go down and slide. Alright, so we're gonna get like, we're gonna get a frenetic in after this cotton. Just so I I like that the tree boss literally just throws trees at you. Out of anything he can throw, not apples, not anything else, trees. <laughs> it's a tree just throwing trees. Just huck trees <laughs> at you, just wham! That's what they do. So yeah. Uh it kinda yeah, so um there isn't there isn't uh like auto fire in this game. But, uh, yeah, you... so if you do use auto fire, you do have to kind of do it manually through yeah. whatever so way you're playing it. You kind of got to mash the button. Um, and plus, you can kind of tell it's not manually auto firing because uh, there's certain aspects of the game where the person who's playing this is using auto fire, where the game slows down because it can't handle the auto fire. Like on the first boss, yeah. if you, uh, two people who might be watching this uh, after recording. If you rewind this video a little bit to watch the first boss, the player is using auto fire and it slows the game down because the yeah. music slows down and the graphics also start to chug a little bit. Yeah, it does happen. Oh, we gotta have the graveyard the little part where there's you know zombies and stuff. Those zombies do look a little creepy. Jeez, get <laughs> yeah. a face on those things, man. That that's nightmare fuel. Jeez. I think one of the first times I played, I was like flying by the ground and then a zombie came out of the ground and Whoa. got me. <laughs> nice. Like he, he See, rose look at the, from the face grave. on those zombies. That's nightmare fuel. That's pretty creepy. Like they have this, this weird, this sort of 
darkness to them. It's like, whoa. And then I like the uh, floating just background. <laughs> I know, that's weird, like... those clouds just kind of kind of go back and forth, kind of wobble. Yeah, so this Look at the Grim Reaper! Yeah, this I remember when the Grim Reaper had all this crap to him. Like the, the spot, the, the, the chest, the red oh. cage thing thing, those weird snake things coming out of its body, the skull. <laughs> oh yeah. Alright, well I think this guy's uh, got invincibility on. <laughs> yeah. The bullets went right through him. <laughs> yeah, I <it's>, yeah. <laughs> Now that skull's just not stopping. That skull wants cotton dead. Them YouTube long plays. Gotta love them. Yep. With the invincibility. Alright, we got some tea time. Get all the keys. Yes, Cotton, you just killed death. You are better than death. <laughs> Go fuck it. Oh boy. Praise, praise based Cotton. Praise based Cotton. Based Cotton. Yes. Look, now she's just going this ape shit. Oh god, now she's just like, oh god, candy, yes, yay. <laughs> killed death, and now I want more. I wants to eat them still. <laughs> She's so creepy, almost. I know. <laughs> like, it's creepy how, like, obsessed she is. She wants that candy, holy crap. She's kind of a weird girl. <laughs> Grim Reaper is trying to stop you from candy. Like, Cotton's not taking that BS. She's like, no, Grim Reaper, I'm gonna get my candy even if it means taking you down. She'll do anything for that candy. <laughs> <laughs> I like the game's second boss's death, not the final boss, but the second boss, because it's like, what else can you do after you defeat death? Oh, I don't know, just let's just, you know, let's just continue going around the world again. She wants more of it. Yep. So that's pretty cool, I got some diagonal, link like, upward scrolling and stuff. Pretty unique, actually, for, uh, the time. Now, that's pretty interesting, I like that. I'm just like a floating island back there. Look, like, maybe they're in a cave. I don't even know what the hell is going on. <laughs> Both a cave and a floating island piece. <laughs> it's just fantastic. All the little sort of light blues mixed in with the black background, it, it actually works really well. I wish you would use some of the magic, because it does look pretty cool. Yeah, as you can tell, the player's shot ability is getting up even higher, and the yeah. little magic bar is getting longer, so that player is really making some progress. With the yeah. And dying is really bad because you power down yeah, quite a bit and when you die. Like it's 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 really bad. You'll have to slowly rebuild all your progress. Which funny enough, I'm not trying to diverge from the game or anything, diverge from the game, but I actually don't mind when I die and I lose all my progress. It kinda makes me try harder. Like, alright, maybe yeah. I just wasn't doing well enough, I gotta try harder. True. Little blue devil guys, oh jeez. Yeah. Little... Some of the enemies do surprise you in this game. Yeah, and those clouds, those will never stop being creepy looking. I like, I like to play, the. Uh, I was playing this one uh, during Halloween last year. Oh nice! It's like a nice That's Halloween a game to play. To play Halloween on, like Halloween night, got the lights down low, play some games like this, or Splatterhouse, or any other game like that. <laughs> yeah. Funny if I mentioned Splatterhouse, because that even has its own cute em up sort of style. We know it's not a shoot em up, it's a cutie game, it's a cute game. Yes, of all games to have a cute game to it, Splatterhouse. Oh, Joe. It has a cute, ver like, uh, game in yeah, the series? Yeah, it does, for the Famicom. <laughs> oh, wow. Splatterhouse and Paku Graffiti. Wow. <laughs> oh, yeah, but yeah, Splatterhouse, the most, probably the goriest game of the 1980s. Yes, that has a cute game. How appropriate, right. Namco, how appropriate. Right, and yeah, there's like this serpent now we have Medusa shots. boss or something. I forget what it is. Oh, here we go. A cow with an eye. Yeah, I forgot to mention too, like you can send the options at, at enemies, like she just they just used it there. And uh I don't know, it's kinda alright, yeah, just kinda sending them out at there. Yeah. You can also uh like I think if you hold uh like B and shot when you're using your special power up, you can make the uh, s the specials do different things as well. Like I think the uh, the fire will like send it'll, it'll like send out like this kind of fire circle at enemies, and then with the lightning, I think you can make a shield actually. I can get why the player is using the options as that sort of extra bit of damage boost, because doing that while also shooting can do pretty. It sound, it seems like it's doing a pretty decent amount of chain damage. Yeah. So clear that he's using invincibility. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> this boss is pretty good though. It yeah. Takes a little while. It takes a while to figure out, but once you get it, you feel pretty nice. I like it too. It really seems like it's trying to give you like a challenge. There's all those little shooting things from the ground that can shoot up and just kill you right there. Yeah. Got the weird chain on that boss where it's just kind of going back and forth. It's limbering, so it could go anywhere. Alright, well, we'll just watch uh, this last cutscene and then move on to the next game, so we'll see what the right. cutscene has to offer here. I'm gonna try to spend uh, about 10 to 15 minutes on each game. Yep. But uh, I think people got a good idea of this one. <laughs> I've taken another step to the great goal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's it. <laughs> that was a short one. Alrighty. All right, and then we're gonna try to get uh, frenetic in here. Um, Thought will stop at nothing to get her candy. Let's she see. killed the Grim Reaper, and now she wants more of that candy. Gotta have it. It's all about that candy. All right, I'm gonna try to call frenetic here. No, hopefully um, we can get him in here. Is it ringing or what the hell? I think we might have to make a new um, a new group. Thing all right. Here. Um, how do I, I want to yeah, I Actually, know. wait, since I'm the host of this call, I could try trying to see if I can get him in here. Alright, yeah, try it out, try it out. Actually, first, I just need to do one quick thing. Give me one little moment. Uh, <clears throat> let's see here. Sorry about the little delay, folks. We shall have this fixed in a little jiffy. It's all good, it's all good. I'll see what's uh, going on in the chat. Do the options block shots normally? Um, I don't think they do. And uh, uh, I think that just kind of depends on how you kind of shoot them. Because some shmups, whether it be cute em up or a basic shmup, if they have those options, sometimes they will and sometimes they won't. I think it just depends on the game itself. Yeah. But that just uh, from... What I've been, what I've played of it, and what I've watched on this video, that just, like I said, it depends on the game. Okay. <clears throat> so coming up next, uh, we got uh, Daytona Twinbee. Oh, lovely! I believe it's the second game in the Twinbee Twinbee series for the arcade. <laughs> Twinbee's always lovely. Pretty big step step up from uh, the original. Um, yeah. The original was uh, it was very like uh, very simple, simple game. Sa same hardware as Gradius One. And it just it's kind of running on its own little thing while still kind of borrowing off of Gradius's engine to do stuff with. And I always thought that was a little interesting. <laughs> like it's got really simple graphics, but it is colorful and uh, it has the whole bell mechanic and stuff. The original, but. In the second the game, they like they added like a whole like story and like a whole world to the to the series. Like it really it, like it really got popularized. Popularized. <laughs> hey, how's point. it going, guys? Oh, there we go. Fantastic. Hey, hey. What's up? What up? Fnatic, welcome to the call. Hey there, UFO. Hey Aquas? there. Isn't it? Yay, we got Fnatic in Hooray, the house. Hey guys. Fantastic. <laughs> Alrighty, now that we have Fnatic in our call to do this. Something that I wanted to add to the point of uh, Aquas' uh, <clears throat> point about Twinbee, something that I've always enjoyed about Twinbee, and I noticed this about Konami when they made the Twinbee games, I like that every single sequel, well, the point of a sequel is to show a different story while having the same characters and possibly making the, well, also showing off something and making things a little better, especially for the case of video games, that literally comes into play for the Twinbee games. Every Twinbee sequel, it fixes what problem the first game may have had and made things a little better, so I always found it to be interesting about them. Whether it be the first couple arcade sequels, the exclusive Super Famicom sequels, or just later on sequels. That's just something that I've always, that's always just mesmerized me about the Twinbee games. Oh. Yeah, like plus I say. They have, I mean, plus, they have some of the most happiest, like, catchy, feel-good music ever. Like, I've said this before about Kitamas, but like, these games especially have just some really nice tunes. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And, yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, you could say something frenetic? Oh, yeah. You know, it's also funny to, to see about, like, these Konami Kitamas. They're actually, the Kitamas are more often than not much harder than... Yeah, it's kind <laughs> are, of... That's actually They're really hard point. games. Yeah, they are. That's <laughs> yeah. a really good point. Twinbee games are pretty, like, they are very challenging. 
And we will, and and we're going to be checking out another game later. Uh, yeah, game Tengoku Paradise, and that game is almost impossible. Oh you know? god, that game is ridiculous. Fact, the Parodius games themselves is, I think, probably one of the biggest contenders of cute 'em ups. Those uh, final airs of those games get really tricky, like almost <laughs> game breaking tricky. It can get really tough. Yeah. I, oh. Are you talking about the part in the well? There's in the original Parodius. There's like literally a wall, like a, a big wall in your way, and the yeah. only the only way to get by is to use the green bell power, which makes yeah, you invincible. Yeah, I remember that. That was just insane. <laughs> when I got to that the first time, I was like, oh, "Come on!" I, remember I got to the Parodius <laughs> collection. The, I got the first collection for uh, PSP, and I think that I think the first gr- Parodius was on that collection. Yeah, it I is. I remember I think getting to that part. You got there, yeah. And, I tried to save before getting to it, and I remember trying with so many different things. I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Come on, <laughs> Konami. Jeez. Yeah, come on, Konami. God. You're like, I guess I'll put another 100 yen in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's cute, so it's going to be easy. <laughs> nope. Yeah. nope. Nope. Yeah, they be trolling it up. All right, so, yeah, about Daytona Twin Me then. Uh, so this one, yeah, came out in 1991. Um Actually, has a uh, composers. Uh, one of the composers is Michiro Yamane, uh, the Castlevania oh, yeah. lady. As uh, one of my favorite know. composers of uh, video games, she's a really good composer. So, kind of got some of her start in the uh, Twin B games, which is pretty pretty awesome. There's a couple other composers. I'm not sure if they're as notable. Um, I but uh, that you mentioned the composers. Really quick, fun fact: uh, for a lot of Konami's earlier games from the 80s, 90s, a lot of uh, composers who went on to do better and, well, better, uh, later Konami games in the 2000s and the later 90s, got their mm-hmm. start. So here's a good point. Akira Yamaoka, who might be known for the Silent Hill games, yep. he got his start in a lot of very cutesy Konami games. So think about that. Really? guy who composed for really dark and grim and horrific games got his start in cute little adorable games. Hope that doesn't <laughs> ruin your thoughts too much. <laughs> do you know what, what uh, games he did? I don't remember too much of his yeah. earlier games, but one of the games he did make that uh, he helped uh, make, uh, he helped compose for a cute game was actually one of the Sparkster games. And okay. I think that's just so odd. A cute yeah. little Sparkster game to Silent Hill. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta wonder. I mean, and then Michi- Michiro Yamane as well does uh, you know, did a lot of the Castlevania music, so. <laughs> I love just the contrast of it. Like, all right, Mr. Yamaoka, we're gonna need you to compose for this cutesy little fun platformer game. And then, like, ten years later, all right, Mr. Yamaoka, we're going to make you compose for this game that's dark, horrific, has realistic human characters, and it's about many different violent, vile acts. Well, all right, like, here, let's do it. It's like oftentimes, you I, know... I bet you yeah. looked at his old Twin B repertoire and was like, okay, how can I how can I record this? He probably played the chord progressions backwards or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, oh, God. <laughs> let's put it in a minor key. Some so guys, back, we need to get you on that. Just looks back at his older work with bloodshot eyes like, I can't go back. I can't go back. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's uh, get to watching some of this uh, this video. This is also uh, uh, outside of the um, Japan. It was uh, This Daytona Twin B is called Bells and Whistles, by the way. Cute this, name. This is actually That's the, the, yeah. actually Even that the version cute. we're looking at here. Yeah, also, um, you guys so who had a Nintendo back in the day, uh, this was a Stinger for the Nintendo um, Nintendo NES, uh, was part of the series, too. It was yeah. known as Moero Twin B Cinnamon Hakase Wosukue, or uh, Burn Twin B Rescue Dr. Cinnamon. So, Stinger, <laughs> you, might got, you might have uh, you know played that game in your youth. All right, well, let's get to the video then. Uh, so that was going to be the Bells and Whistles 1991 video here. Uh, oh, Aquas, can you send it to me in the IRC chat, the yeah. link for okay. the videos? Oh, yep, yeah, definitely. Sorry about that. I'm on, that on uh, Skype on my phone, so the links are, would open up in my phone. Oh, okay, uh, on IRC, okay. Okay, awesome, cool, got it. I'll get you the other one, too, before we get to the next vid. Yeah, just drop uh, all the links in there. Sweet, thank you. All right, let me know when you're uh, when you're good here. Okay, I got that up. You good? Yep. All right, cool. All right, three, two, one, click. And frenetic, you're gonna hear uh, the audio a bit too, by the way. Okay. Yeah. 
Look so, at that intro. Look yeah, at those graphics. They're really man, showing this game off is just here. pretty. This game is Look. just pretty. Look at those colors. Man, that is just so good looking. It's ah. like a million stories. Ah, oh. oh, it's a broken Crash into the moon. Oh. Dang. Thanks, Twimby. Now we have Come no on. moon and we're gonna die. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> That's the story. Like you, you, yeah. you ruined the moon. the moon. Oh, we're screwed. Okay, thanks, Wendy. <laughs> think you're so cute with your little things and your big yellow dome face. And... I like how the ranking is on a billboard on the building. I like, I like that. <laughs> I always thought that was cute. That's neat. It's like, get it, you guys? It's oh, a oh, yeah. ranking There's... billboard. My name is Malora, and I live on the planet Meru. We are now being attacked by the forces of Iva. Save us before it's too late. Save She's us. so cute. I have no idea how I'm holding this ball in my I'd hand. I'd like to so cute her up. Uh, uh, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> you just beat me to the punch, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. We were all, yeah, we all thinking <laughs> of there. I think it's Chris Hansen. <laughs> so, oh, so shot fired. Here's a little bit about the bells. Um, if you guys aren't f familiar with um, the Twin B film, so, like, the different color bells give uh different power-ups that's right yep so but there's a new bell and it called like the, a purple bell that provides like a shield at the back and also a black bell which you don't which will decrease your speed so oh and that's that what it does, okay. actually come in to be kind of handy at some point because that <laughs> like gradius which as odd as it may sound some of those actually do come in handy to help you slow down through maybe some of the quicker parts of the game or you have to have specific movements trying to maybe get through like maybe a firewall yeah. or certain other sort of things like that. Well, I'm glad they added it because in the first Twin B, like, I always wanted a uh, speed down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you don't get one and it's like you accidentally <laughs> speed up all the time in the, in the original. Sequels, so. The first Twin B yeah. The first Twin B is really rough. Like it's really rough around the edges so it might be a little hard yeah. to get into but once you kind of get it, it's, it's, it's pretty solid. So that, yeah, yeah. so, uh, go ahead. Oh, especially when you get blue bells, because they're the ones that increase your speed. So if you're just, like, trying to dodge and you're just shooting the bells and you grab a whole bunch of blue bells, like, yeah. so I need a black bell. Yeah, like, I might need this to actually slow down a little bit. Slow your roll. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of people like to uh, compare, like, the uh, kind of style they took with the, with the Swim B game as kind of, a, like, a Miyazaki um, type of uh, oh, yeah. landscapes and exactly stuff sort of like movie. that. That really makes sense. Oh. Uh, a lot of the visuals to this specific game, especially this first level, look like, exactly like the movie he made, uh, Castle in the Sky. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, even some of the buildings, they, they, they kind of look like the architecture. A lot of really cute ar buildings, a lot of yeah. cliffs, a lot of yeah. canyons, a lot of those sort of things. Just the idea of like a very um, kind of busy world. Or, uh, yeah. and a beautiful it's world, a, I think, a is... very busy town set in this sort yeah. of environment, like a, a steampunk canyon village, where... Yeah, look at that cart in the corner going around, uh, yeah. Look at those cliff tops. They have little holes in them. I can imagine people just live in those little cliff tops, besides mm -hmm. the houses at the bottom of the canyon. Something else, a <laughs> uh, very interesting note, Twinbee is oh. kind of interesting with how it got to English players, because... Well, I mm -hmm. noticed that Europe tends to be screwed out of a lot of video game deals or a lot of video games in general. Europe was lucky because Europe actually got a lot of really good Twinbee games. They got a good taste of what Twinbee was about. Hmm. Oh, I did not know that. Hmm. Yeah, a lot of uh, these Twinbee games were exclusively released to Europe because of, uh, I think, Konami sub-company Palcom. Or, I think that's what it's called. Yeah, Palcom. Mm hmm And by those, they also, those also released... Uh, I think the first, one of the first Proteus games for the NES, not the first in general, but one of the first NES uh, Proteus games, and a few other uh, shmups too, and I always thought that was pretty interesting. Of course, what do we have for first boss? Giant lobster robot thing. Yeah. Um, so going into the chat, um, we've got some comments about uh, E-Cave MB, our Mr. B says, uh, buy a retro game challenge if you like these kind of retro games. Yes, that's a great, that's a game. That's great a game fun. for, yeah. I hope they come out with number two if that translation moves forward. Yeah, I hope so too. Of course, I like uh, Twin B. He's got his little right, pop right. gun shooting away. Uh, we got Icarus uh, lamenting uh, Konami's uh, licenses that haven't gone, such as Twin yeah. B. I hear you, they dude. Don't have I feel the same way about the Goemon games. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. They don't have a license for Goemon? Well, it's not that they don't have the license, but they're just not doing anything oh, with it. Oh, yeah. Nothing's really been known in like a decade. It's really sad. 
Inko one uh, Akira uh, says Akira Yamaoka also made a lot of the uh, Beat Mania two DX game music. Right. So. Yeah, it did. I think uh, some Silent Hill music came into that series, which is odd. This is not this is not live play. This is just a replay right now. Yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, Call of Duty sells millions. Right. We just want like ten thousand. Come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it would probably, you know, we probably still have these properties. For if they gamers sold. that they don't always want to play a first-person shooter. So you yeah. got some. You I got do some, like those. Uh, got some chickadee but... ducks there. Like, why? I gotta yeah. kill them, man. Come on. Yeah, they're so cute. <laughs> they're so cute. You gotta shoot them in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the hug button? Like, I hope, they're, go I hope they're going to heaven. <laughs> yeah, I know. Seriously. Well, no, we're already in clouds. Uh, they don't got very far to go, I guess. Yeah, go just, up a little bit? Okay, there just, you go. Yeah, push, <laughs> just pushing them up further. <laughs> yeah, just going like, give them a little nudge up. Let me exactly, give you there you go. They're done. It's, it's good. Oh, classic Twin B moment when you got just like a crap load of bells and you don't know what to do with them. You gotta bounce ball. <laughs> you gotta like, jump. You gotta just what? jump. Oh, oh. Do I just get him for bonus? Can he black, get it? There was black belt. Do yep. I slow down? He's getting yep. him. So, <laughs> I always like the juggling mechanic. Well, it's pretty fun. Up all these uh, games that might have, for cute em ups that might have cute enemies, you think there'd be like a hug button or something. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the hug button, Konami? Like get a on fun it. Time Come button. On. <laughs> Third button needed in shmup. Hug oh. button. Uh. Oh, the pink flamingos from Battle Garega are back. <laughs> oh, <wait>. <laughs> <laughs> Never <laughs> After you shoot this back. adorable enemy in the face multiple times and it's badly injured, give it a hug. Like, hey, you know what I... no, hard, no hard feelings, buddy. I just wanted to shoot you in the face several times. Yeah, there you go. Oh, more ducks, kill him. You know what I also like about this is that they have uh, bombs. You know, that, that's kind of neglected. You know, this, in yeah. the Xavier series, we both had shot in the sky and also bomb yeah, on the ground. ground. You right. have to kind of mix your... You have to do both shots at the same time. Yeah, I kind of miss that. Something else you might yeah. notice, uh, viewers, how uh, the Twin B units throw bombs is literally they have built-in hands to the ships and those yeah. hands just throw them yeah it actually yeah they actually show you right watch how you're getting shot at is you can take a few hits before you die necessarily but you have to watch up some enemy uh, most enemies or just enemies in general will blow off your hand and then you'll have no hands to throw bombs at so you can only just shoot right. the sky and when you lose both your hands, uh, the medic will come, and you can that'll, yeah. ha that'll happen you once. Find the medical little truck thing in oh, the sky. Go into it. Of. There you go. <laughs> Just like takes off <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> like okay, bye. <laughs> Whee! <laughs> the guy Remind on the top, he's like just dancing on the Remind on the boat. Reminds me of uh, Spy Hunter when you crash and a little extra truck just comes by and drops your car off and it's like okay, bye. See you. Yeah, see ya. And you're like, no, I want another power up. Can I get a power up in the van? Nope, nope. Like, no, just... Sorry, I already delivered the card. Bye. No. Bye. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> Man, even those cloud, that cloud background just looks really cool. I like it. I got, like that kind of a uh, couple layers like there. Said, like I said back at the intro, such pretty colors. Seriously. You don't see this very often. A boss shooting it from the side, like starting to, starting right away, so you're shooting at you from the side on the left. Going from all these different corners. I'm getting Gunbird flashbacks. Oh jeez. <laughs> oh Gunbird. Yep, just going through. <laughs> oh dang. Looks like your ship's destroyed, yeah. so. Usually oh. the first time you play you get hit by that. <laughs> oh, great. You're, you're like, I killed it, I killed it. I can go ahead and squiggle around on the boss's carcass. Nope. And it's just like, Not nope, dead. still got a few more cannons. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I gotta shoot the core yet. Get the core. Oh, oh, oh there's that uh, charge shot. Okay. Yeah. Yep. That's like many other Twin B sequels. They always add something extra to the game to make it a bit more better than its previous game. And yeah, for this game, it would be that giant charge shot. Got a Another little cutscene. Cut hey, it's Pastel. Hey, Pastel. Hey. Just hanging out near Twin B, shooting stuff, posing for a camera. Uh, that control panel, so good. For some, for some reason, there's a camera in there. She's just always posing. <laughs> Like, right. hey, what's up? Just in my twin B unit shooting things. So I suppose after this stage, we'll move on to the next one. Yeah. I'm just in my, in my, in my plane, shooting ducks in the face. <laughs> shooting baby ducks in the face. Like, you have to imagine what goes through their <laughs> their head when they're, like, flying. Like, well, their... <laughs> oh, everything's adorable, so that's why you shoot it in the face. Like, like is oh. it just norm? Is it just, like, the norm, or? <laughs> <I don't even laughs> know. 
Dr. Cinnamon, you're a demented but little yeah, sucker. There's some, like, yeah, castle is... in the sky type she stuff just... for sure right there. She's killing uh, vegetables, but picking up fruit. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Like, pick there. those tournaments. I don't like turnips. Yeah. But like I will have that yeah, easy that People don't like them vegetables, eh, Konami? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. That's explaining to do. I think teacups are also a common enemy in these games for some reason. I'm not sure yeah. why. <laughs> this level especially seems very inspired off a of castle in the sky. Yeah, all these broken yeah. up castles, all these broken up cliffs in the sky. Exactly. Oh, Jamers91 says there's already a hug em up called Hagato Hoppa. What? Which is a game that's been. Uh, Hagata Hoppa. Wow. Which has been um, licensed by Rockin' Android. So yeah, I, hope I think you. Because I want to see that like as a thing, like a hug em up where you hug. I think you turn into a bomb and. Like, oh you no! Up. <laughs> and then you like, yeah. you run into that. Oh no, okay. wonder you hug, then you're a bomb, of course. Yeah, yeah. Again, suicide bombing. What? I don't know. <clears throat> Oh man, it's a suicide bomber. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Konami shoots in the always. face. Everything is so cute and adorable. That's why you have to shoot it right in the face and kill it. Yeah, it's uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. I, well, here are these little uh, castles in the sky. What, little, what do you know? Uh, I like that. Yeah. These castles in the sky. People don't put, like, turrets, they put flowers that shoot fireballs. Like, okay, yeah. sure, that's logical. Yeah. You know, well, screw you know. turrets that can actually do the job quicker. No, just play the flower on the one bridge that shoots the fireball. Alright, well, we're safe. Yeah. That's it. We're safe, guys. Don't worry. We're good. See? Little fl you see a little flower right there? Little dinky thing that just shoots the fireball? Alright. That'll work. Yeah, it looks like they have to bomb those. Yeah. Uh yeah. And you get a peach. And I guess if you haven't noticed as well, we didn't mention it, but uh, when you're collecting the yellow bells for the points, you get to collect them in a chain to get the max value. Uh, if you let one fall behind you, you you have to go back to like uh, 500 points or whatever. So, yep. A little juggling thing there. Oh, That's basically the ma the scoring. This is all it is. Right working graphics. I like this boss. Yeah, I mean seriously, you guys had some really good sprite work. I kind of gotta, like, rotate them. Really, really cool idea. Agreed. He's having a little issue. He's having some issues here. Oh, here we go. Yeah, that's cool. It goes it goes clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on which side. Wow. Yeah, the way you have to shoot it. He's almost there. Why can't the Did cave games you? have stuff like this, man? Yeah. Seriously. Cave games are crazy. <laughs> Well, you know, it's it's cool to have moe or like kind of cute things without them just being all girls, you know. Yeah. Right. Maybe this is where moe started. Who yeah, knows? Yeah, maybe. Who knows? Pastel <laughs> is the poster. Moe child. stuff doesn't have to be the only cute thing. Give me other cute things like cute enemies and cute ship designs and stuff like that. Hmm. All right, they did it. Okay, we're gonna fly off. So you're gonna go burn down into the ocean and probably destroy some agriculture. Bye. Bye, bye, guys. Balloon right. destruction my wake. See ya. So uh, up next is uh, Twinkle Star Sprites. I'll get you the link there, Frenetic. Okay, Sick. got it. I love that game. Another oh, I always try to have this at my shmup meets and just yeah. watch probably people like... Probably the most innovative of all the cute em ups Like a really amazingly innovative game. Yeah, what other versus shooters? There's only like... There's only like a what what that one Seta game no that Visco Seta hardware game um, change Airblade and that's I never, never, I never because hardware is so flaky. Funny because so. you mentioned Visco. I was just gonna say I remember they Visco also making a weird Pang ripoff. That was also a versus game where you have to shoot these little boulderly bubble looking things and you have to shoot them in a combo to make the uh, other po opponent uh, get garbage. And I always thought that was weird. Hmm. I wonder which one that is. I, I will do some research. Yeah, I remember this is really being a bad Pang ripoff because a lot of the characters look very much like a Pang character and they had little harpoon guns. I'm like, oh, jeez, come on, guys. Come on, guys, stop ripping off Mitchell. They're, they're, they only they, have Pang. They barely exist as it is, for God's sakes. And you take the one thing they put their blood and soul into. Well, they had Puzzle but unfortunately Zuma just like, oh, hey, we're going to make Zuma or whatever that company is that makes Zuma. We're going to make Zuma, but it's not Puzzle Loop. We promise, but it is, but it isn't. Right. Those Japanese getting ripped off. Uh, Just like, 
Yeah, if Konami had, had uh, Guitar Hero and Drum Hero, man. Oh, All right, so uh, this is a little bit about Twinkle Star Sprites. Uh, came out in 1996. Um, Developed by ADK, it was uh, their last um, uh, Neo Geo uh, or game on the Neo Geo. Um, <clears throat> it's uh, it's on a lot of platforms. It's on arcade, Neo Geo, uh, PlayStation Two, Dreamcast, Dreamcast uh, Sega Saturn, and the Virtual Console. So um, definitely one of these games that's kind of notorious for being uh, just pretty fun, I guess. <laughs> uh, all the shmup games I could recommend to play out of this entire selection of games we're going to be showing off. Well, all of them are all good games in their own right. I'd especially recommend this game, especially if you have friends over. This is a really, really solid, fun, cool, like, two-player game. You can, it's really addicting. There's a bunch of characters you can select from. It's just a really solid game. And uh, I, I, uh, from what I can tell, it's uh, actually pretty simple to play, too. Like, you don't, yeah, really need to, you don't really need to know much except, like, you're just shooting stuff and, you, like... When uh, you do like uh, certain chain attacks or something, uh, it sends like it sends stuff at the other guy. Um, I think in this yeah, video, it actually, also creates like a shield too. Like yeah, if shots are coming on from the other your opponent's side, and you break a chain, it kind of creates a shield, and then it goes back to the other player too. And then you you also have bombs. Uh, you know, works as your standard shmup bomb, protects you. Uh, so it's just uh, it's just uh, one of these games that kind of like decide to do the versus thing and actually made it work. And for all its simplicity, it's it's just a really innovative game. And while all these games I'll recommend that are they're all pretty solid games, I think this game is especially like just a really underrated classic. Yeah, I know. I need to play it a bit more. Whatever way you can, Neo Geo, whatever console you have, or even Virtual Console, any way you can do it, get this game. Really good game. Go get it. Seriously. Yeah, there's a sequel on PlayStation Two, so you guys can go ahead and get that sequel, too. If you can buy this and can somehow support the company that made it or just the, the, the publisher or whatever, do it, because seriously, this is worth every dollar, every penny, every cent. This is a great game. All right, well, with that said, uh, we can uh, watch some of the video here. All right. All right. Uh, three, two, one, click. Let's do this. Player by Shalachi. Shalachi. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, wow. apparently, yeah. Uh, ADK, those guys made some other really interesting Neo Geo games. One of the few companies that actually supported the Neo Geo. Back. Yeah, we got all of our little characters. I'm the prince. Oh, here's some twins. Hey. Got some little We're couples. The Manja Manjas, yeah. Here's a bunch of characters. Never killer. <laughs> <laughs> Next. What is this nonsense? Intro's hype. Yep. Yeah. I'm ready to get my twinkle on. Oh yeah. <laughs> awesome. Twinkle star sprite. <laughs> so I like this video too because uh, they twinkle, let the uh, demo play star. out a bit, so we can kind of learn ah. a bit here. Got a little chibi version of the character in her little animal sidekick. Ah. They're both explaining what happens. I like that little chibi version. Yep, so I just talking about, like, uh, yep, yeah, yeah, dig in the chain there, gets you a special Gotta attack. damage those opponentos. Yep. <laughs> opponentos. <laughs> Wee! Wee! Boom. Your bombs run out. Oops, I've forgotten that. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I think I shocked you. I was like, oh, no, that would have ruined everything. <laughs> you can tell if I would shoot. <laughs> Then you'll get a spe oh yeah here's a special attack that's cool you summon your own big boss that goes on the others oh no uh, we're getting attacked ah the kitty was the, her boss character I see <laughs> you got me <laughs> okay bye guys <clears throat> I think uh, the, the demo play is once again but with a different yeah. part. Yeah, it's, it's one of the few games that has many other tutorials because it's actually quite important. Let's get how to move, how to shoot, how to do combos, how to do all that stuff. And for a game made in 1996, the sprite work and coloring graphics in this game are really impressive. You got to Yeah. Animation. It's funny how like the translation varies from this explanation. 
They're called enemy golems or something. That's, that's nice. <laughs> I can chain the uh, yep. Okay, so now I think he gets into it here. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Look at all this stuff. Oh yeah, make some bacon. Oh yeah. Try the piggy. It's a pigums. It is not a pig. <laughs> I'll be the beach master. Oh, and now she's all mad. Okay. Paper. Don't you be talking trash about my pigums. Oh, look at the pigums. They have the cutest faces ever. Look at those big eyes. They're so cute. Aw. Aw. Pigums. Flying on the pig. Shout out to the pigums. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I guess this game breaks the myth because they look pigs fly. Ah. Did I get there? Did I get there? Ah. So, the what moment hit side? Oh, stick. breaking up hit there, again. frenetic. Yeah. 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 Could you repeat that, please? You, you broke up. Oh yeah. So, um, you notice how he got hit, and you, it showed like where you had to jiggle, jiggle the joystick and press the button. Yeah. If you, you're basically stunned and vulnerable, so if you get hit again, then you'll just die. Regardless of heart level, I think. So yeah. you so you can get hit, but then not get hit again? Is that... Yes, that's yeah, right. Yeah, that's done, you have to shake out of it. Oh, interesting. Is that always the case? Like, you always get a chance to come back? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Those eyes, Whoa. they're so big. Oh my god. I just wanted to go for a swim, damn it. What is this nonsense? It's like, oh yeah, bikini action. <laughs> Wait, cat so just tackles me for no reason. What, what is, is that, this? a cat? What the hell? Yeah, it is. The cat was being a perv? A, a cat and a robot. Well, no, the girl's about to take a swim, and the cat just, like, tackles her. It's like, what is this? I just want to go for a swim. Oh, here's some... You see the Daytona Twin Bee <laughs> action? <laughs> the fist <laughs> coming out again. Yeah. What? Well, pushing animation. Yeah, see, if you collide with the enemies, then you're stunned. So oh, if you get shot... Oh, by... it's colliding with the enemies. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Oh, okay, not bad then. Yeah, see that again? You're stunned. Yep. Yeah, so visually, it's a pretty nice, nice looking game, that's for sure. Dang, this guy's just ripping them up. Take that, computer. Yeah, seriously. But if you're playing against someone else, I swear, it gets so heated. Yeah, it does. Uh, yeah, I love those fighting games, but as much as uh, the next person, but why not another Trinkle's Star Sprite? Or yeah, I know, something like this, it's very innovative. It would be nice for those, those like an uh, HD remake or something. Yeah, this would be really cool to get an HD remake, because this game is just, like I said before, very innovative. Oh, oh yeah, dang. Yeah. I only go out with guys that use magic. Me, me, me. I only go out with guys that have more than like 10 roses to them. <laughs> the story is pretty cute. And then that dude's like, Chick, please, I have more roses than this. And she's like, nope, I don't think so. Oh. Apparently, the first few enemies are pretty easy in character mode. Grand Acres. Watch out! Oh, dang. Geez. Oh dang, the boss right away. Dodge it, dodge it. Shoot that, oh, he's kitty, in real face. Up now. Shoot that kitty in the face with a laser. Shoot it in the face. Next time a cat comes at you in full speed, just shoot it with a giant laser beam. Classic enemy, just a puff with a happy face. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> so Whoa. you notice like some of these enemies are encased in bubbles. Um, if you, if you, uh, you kind of need to break the bubbles first and then kill the enemies in order to get a full chain. Oh, so. gotcha. Okay, cool. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's, that's something. Really, that's, what, that's a little bit like, more depth. That's what creates the domino effect for it. Okay. Ah, cute them up logic. When nothing else works, make little puff balls with smiley faces. Them fish clouds. <laughs> <laughs> Can't also, it. you can see if you're uh, bouncing attack characters back and forth, they'll go faster uh, if you shoot them back and forth. So oh, wow, cool. That's another strategy, too. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Kind of like a Pong effect there. Yeah, so this game's like, really, you know, very deep. I've actually never played it. I'm gonna have to... Oh, dang! Yeah, I'm gonna have to play it sometime. I think one of my friends has the board. Yeah, you guys should do like a little like versus tournament party. Yeah, that'd, that'd be, be cool. cool. Do that seriously. I know they they actually had one at one at one point apparently. <laughs> Great thing about Twinkle Star Sprites when it comes to the versus modes that it actually has more than one round, and versus you have like two rounds, so they have just one. The Looks like they guards. have the Batman logo on their belt. <laughs> Batman. Jeez, that's so weird. They look pretty lame. <laughs> yeah. Is this anime Batman? Jeez. <laughs> anime Batman. Dang. They look Are stupid. They like elves? They're like elves, right? Because of the ears, huh? I like that. Stupid dumbs. Yeah. Stupid. Or stupid dumbs. It's a good dumbs. one. Oh. It's like what a kid would say. What is that a kid? <laughs> what a bunch of stupid dumbs. Oh, nice, the snow level, okay. Yeah. Oh, nice. Pepper! Pepper! <laughs> All those griffins. Look at those sad griffins. Like, fuck. Yeah, they're they're butt hurt. <laughs> yes, they are butthurt. All right, one more one right more back. match, and we'll move on to the next game. Yeah, we're, we're okay. already at an hour Be long right here. Back. Oh, already. Icarus says if you pick up the coin when it has a star face, it destroys all the bubbles. So. Okay. Rabbit cat, you fink! That's what I'm gonna go around calling people. You fink! Don't get to hear that anymore. <laughs> God. And the bombs slow down everything too, I notice. pretty mesmerizing just watching this one. It's like you go from screen to screen. <laughs> Normal attack. Also, it, I know, don't know if you notice that when you do your charge shot and you shoot the bubbles, like the charge shot will pass through the enemies, not necessarily kill them, but destroy the bubbles around the enemies. So, okay. A little bit of strategy for you guys that are going to play Twinkle Star Sprites versus. Right, maybe we can do one more. Uh, yeah, one more I think this here. is the last one, right? Oh, okay. Right. My broom's broken. I can't fly. Ah, oh, it's so bright. <laughs> God. It's still another stage. Mm. Well, we'll leave it for, other, for, for people to see for themselves. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, can you send me the link for the next video, Aquas? Oh, yeah. Sweet. Dang, that bomb. Gravity hole bomb. Oh, by the way, in the in the kind of inner room that we have here, just want to let you know, Schmucks Forum is having a donation drive. Um, they need to get a new server, so please go ahead and check out uh, the donation drive thread and 
uh, or click that button in the upper uh, right hand corner that says donate. Yeah, that'd be yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, yeah, so anybody yeah who uses the Shmups forum, uh, please please consider making a donation because uh, the guy who who has ran the forum has pretty much not taken donations for years and years and years, and uh, the forum has been ad free and uh, pretty much the best resource for shooting game information. Um, so please consider making a donation, and that'll help out a lot. Just um, yeah, getting a new server and that type of thing. I'll get a link to that in uh, the YouTube description as well. Okay, People. cool. Yeah, it's been a it's been a great forum through the years, to be quite honest. Yeah, and I think I think without without that forum, um, me and Aquas would not have met and and started STG Weekly. You know, like yeah, I mean it's it's basically the place. Um, it's actually, you know, probably one of the better communities on the internet, gaming communities on the internet, to be honest as well. Well, mm. a decent one, a decent one. I mean, <laughs> it has. Yeah, guys, we're not gonna say it's the best. You guys gotta work at it. <laughs> every community has their their, you know, iffy parts. So, but as far as the information, um, it's 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 there in spades. Oh, I'm on the wrong damn chat again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had your PM window up. <laughs> okay, I've got. Yeah, I got. I got it. Are we doing Harmful Park next? Uh, yes, yes, we are. Okay, okay. Sorry, I might have had a couple drops there because I was uh, loading the video. Oh yeah, producing the show. All right. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we're gonna go to a harmful park because uh, Chibi, um, she wants she wanted to talk about Super Fantasy Zone, so we're, we're gonna sk skip doing that one next. But we'll do the Super Fantasy Zone is gonna be next though. Okay, All right, cool. So yeah, harmful park. Uh, this was actually requested on Twitter, so. Um, yeah, we hopefully will. Uh, it's a it's a really you know rare game, or well maybe not rare, but a pricey game, you know, for PlayStation. So oh, hopefully yeah. you guys will get a little glance at it, and you know. We'll talk about it right right uh let's see yeah, a little in info about it let's see uh developer was uh sky think systems apparently and uh i'm trying to see a bit of info here i'm, I'm on the uh, hardcore gaming 101 site mm. uh, eh well, whatever. What do you know about Harmful Park? I know that it's really expensive. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Basically, uh, yeah, this game's pretty uh, wacky as far as cute em ups go. I know it has like like uh, like a pie like pie launching and stuff like this, and um, it's uh, ah, it's just another cool cute em up. Uh, we'll, we'll let the video speak for itself, I suppose. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's kind of food food themed, yeah, so you'll get to see right, that. Right, right. That's okay. I'm kind of remember that now. I'm seeing like some flying wieners here. Yeah, <laughs> we love those flying wieners here on SGG Weekly. Flying wieners. <laughs> Good times. All right, let's get this going here. Producing the stream. Alrighty, I'm back. Do. Sorry about the wait. Oh, perfect timing. We're about to start a harmful park, actually, and then we'll, then we'll do Super Fantasy Zone. Let me fire that up. Please do. Sure. And, uh... Let's see. So, uh, yeah, so the game's set in a uh, bizarre amusement park, apparently. Um, an evil scientist has taken over Heartful Park and is using it for nefarious purposes. Uh, one of his colleagues aims to stop him, but she's old. She's too old to do it herself, so she commands her two slacker daughters to save the day. Yeah, nice. Equipping them with some kind of flying motorcycle armed to the teeth with strange weapons. Okay, that's descriptive. Yeah. You can switch between four weapons at any time. Potato, ice cream, pie, and jerry. Should be jelly. Potato, <laughs> ice cream, jelly, and pie. Wow. The potato Those gun. are weapons. I love that. The potato gun is your standard uh, rapid fire. Ice cream is uh, similar to a laser. 
Uh, pi is uh, slow, but um, it, 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 it travels at an arc like I used to throw in pies. Does good damage, and then the jelly is a homing weapon. Um, each weapon can be strengthened up individually up to three times. Um, you're almost yeah, your instant uh, respawn when you die. Uh, no checkpoints. Um, each weapon has a secondary function. You can use a limited amount of times. Okay, cool. All right. Um, so I guess a bit basic rundown on that. All right, cool. Well, are you all ready for this then? Yeah, yeah I'm ready. Yeah. All right, sweet. Watch from the beginning. All right, three, two, one, go. Highbrow gag and peer shooting, it says. Highbrow gag. <laughs> Highbrow? I think, really? I think that might describe my life in a nutshell. Highbrow <laughs> gag. I think this Kenichi Fujita is the same guy that, uh, who made this game, made Strikers 1945. Woo! Really? Nice. I don't know. You, there's a guy listed with the same name, so shooter maybe. The thing that impresses me about this game is that it's one of the very first, uh, one of the very first, one of the very few console exclusive shmups, and it really works because I think this game works to the PlayStation's graphics can, graphics capabilities. Because this game has some very good sprite work and graphics. It's very well well done. So apparently this is a scoring run. So we'll see some tricks here. That's cool. Wow. Uh, not sure how he canceled all that, but... <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Holy crap. I love these ice cream lasers. That's just cool. What are, the, mm -hmm. are, those, are those pigs in the Ferris wheel carts, or... What are those guys? I think so. With the I horns. They're, pegs. they're just having a, jo a jolly old time. I like how they left one behind, just to oh, you know, no. tell the story. Oh no, flying gumball machine! Ah! Killer gumballs! Watch out! <laughs> They'll choke on them and die. Even blowing Shoot a Shoot that panda in the face! Shoot that, that panda in the bubble. face! Look at that bubble. What is this, Pang? Jesus. I think this is one of those cute em ups where like everything is like you have to question your your reality when you see it. <laughs> it's like everything's oh, that was a messed good. up. Is that a suicide? Huh. Maybe, yeah, maybe. So we got some teddy bears and Yeah, this really looks like it takes the PlayStation's 2D capability and really cranks it up a notch. So I, I think this is pretty interesting. Shout out to the airplanes. Like in, our, in our commentary. <laughs> Thank you, airplanes. Airplanes are in shmups, therefore it's relevant. Yeah, they, yeah and airplanes like, hey, I, I, <laughs> my people star in shmups. We're going to do this. Commentary. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Had a plane drop by. I'm, it's all good. It's all good. I'm next yeah, to the line. Yeah, time to drop by and do some commentary. Yep. Plane, it's a plane, plane and Terry. Like, hey, plane, smups, I get it. Fly by. <laughs> All right. Music sounds kind of pretty chill. So that Ooh. lemon must be uh, one of the secondary powers, I believe. The big lemon bomb thingy. Oh, nice. Shooting like little coffee plasma at you. Uh. <laughs> Shout outs to the scalding cup of coffees in uh, Earthbound. <laughs> Shout out to coffee in general, because that actually could be as a really nasty weapon. Just throw it at somebody, that would burn. Ouch. Just freshly, a freshly brewed cup. Whoosh! Ah! <laughs> Shout out to these rotating hands. That, uh, the scaling on that looks so impressive. You can tell this is PlayStation, because man, like seriously, the sprite lights on these things are just amazing. The oh, look, little cowboy good. hats. Oh, That's they're so like cute. uh, they're, they're, they're little cowboy hats. How adorable! They're like they're like a uh, 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 a version of a me tool or something from Mega yeah, Man. Yeah, they're like a tool, but it's a cowboy hat. <laughs> or they could be a fedora, but to me, it looks like a cowboy hat. Yeah. Those guys are what are they riding? Guitar or, or what the hell? No, it's like a. What the hell is that? What the hell it is? <laughs> Could be something like that. Oh, it's Bowser. Maybe. Fat Bowser. Uh. Okay, it's not Bowser. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. 
Yeah. I love how it says highbrow gag too. Yes. Highbrow high gag. I like the little stitching patches on the uh that monster's knees. Oh god, gross, it's shooting boogers out of its nose. That's disgusting. Whoa! Ooh. What an explosion. Guess he had some bombs in him. No more shoot no more shooting boogers anymore. Boss destroyed. Yay! Alright. Four rows. Nice. nice. Look at that spook tag. Oh, they have little baseball bats. How oh, I get it. Little pun. Get it? Bat, baseball bats. Ha ha. Oh, nice. You get it? They're you making, you, making you. It's, pun. It's high, that's their definition of highbrow right there. Yeah, it's visual. Yeah, <laughs> those guys. <laughs> visual puns are the best if you're six. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, look at those girls. They're so cute. Look at them. Oh yeah, you kill them and their empty sheets fall into the abyss. Like, oh no! Oh. Oh, the yeah, I like that, 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 like that blue thing looks like. It is like a horror house gag where it's like a flashlight and literally like a face. Like, oh, I'm scary, a flashlight! <laughs> That's pretty cheesy. I, I, like that. I like that. That's actually kind of creative. Oh, the ghosts are so cute! I hate when you shoot them because they just fall like, oh no, oh my god! There's a lot of different, different uh, enemies. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. Oh. Whoa! Menzu B! <laughs> Get a Sunday. Yes, Always it. flash you! I believe those were feet, Oswald. Check this out. Oh, Plane and Terry incoming. Oh no! <laughs> it's like, I've got more to say, dang it! Let me speak! <laughs> little, a little bee looking thing and a genie. Are those goldfish? The plane, the plane. No, they're, they're either goldfish or bees. They're like flies. They look like bees. Honey nut. Oh Jesus dang! Bee. Shoot that doll in the face. Whoosh. Look at that girl riding the pink I think, airship. I think look you're at a that. few seconds ahead of us, frenetic. Shooting all the dolls in the face. Ah, they get all creepy. Look at all the faces <laughs> of the dolls. Yeah. Like, oh god, what is this? Uh, I don't want that doll in my collection. <laughs> <laughs> doll that shoots bullets at you? No, thank you. Like, just imagine, like, you, like some girl, she has, like, this, like, doll, but, like, one day it, like, makes that face, like, traumatized for life. <laughs> yeah, just like, Rah! It's like, oh, jeez, watch like, out! Oh god, why? What the hell? I'm never going to bed again. <laughs> Dang. Oh, wow. Got like points for, uh. Wow, that was pretty cool. See what they did there? Yeah, that's pretty nifty. Get them points. Chomp them up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then just. Okay, yeah. All right, the hearts with lips and a face, great. Wow. Interesting. Oh, do you hear that music? It sounds like a certain song. Like a wedding do, song? Do, 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 do. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like a really creepy, I just, look at all, look at, look at them kissing. Kissing so hard they made hearts that shoot bullets. Jeez, that must be some hard, ki must be some hardcore kissing. Yeah. I hope if I ever get married, I kiss my partner and we make bullets that we make hearts that shoot bullets at everything. Just <laughs> they were literally cute him upping their kisses. Yeah, no kidding, seriously. <laughs> Even those cute little heart designs, they shoot bullets. Oh my god, that's creepy and dangerous. Now we have some crystalized enemies, literally. Look at all them floating things. Floating on by. This game is really uh, taking an interesting tone. Yeah. <laughs> music, seriously. It's kind of creepy. 
Yeah, it's a little odd. It's like, it's just somber. Is that uh, rock candy or something? I, it could be. Like uh, a special now kind, we have a, like Willy now we Wonka? Have a thing of veg now we have a thing of vegetables. Like Willy Wonka's uh, special rock candy? Yes. <laughs> Alright. Spoilers, it's meth! <laughs> God dang. Look at that giant pumpkin. Holy crap, that's a big old pumpkin. Damn! Oh, well, Alright, well, pied him out. Oh no! Bitch, get pied! <laughs> 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 Bitch, get ice cream. Oh, it's broken stained glass. Okay, that makes more sense. Yeah, it would make sense because of the church. Right. Animal zone, hooray. Animal say zone. Flying oh, yeah, kill those flying squirrels. Kill them. Alright, after this support. stage, we'll move on to the other, the next game. Still okay. Got a, still got a few more here. Kill all those cute things. Yeah, this sprite works really nice. Yeah. yeah. It's. It's like, I wish PlayStation maybe put out more games like this instead yeah, this of a really polygon, nice. you know? Just think of yeah. all the... All the all the games like this we could have had, I think yeah. that co companies like that forgot at the time of Sega Saturn and, and PlayStation that these game, these consoles could do really good 2D games, like really good yeah. animation on 2D games and good graphics. Look at that hippopotamus oh, the in the background, it keeps on swallowing up that girl. So, and then we hate her. That's uh, interesting. Oh. See, they just put stuff like that in the background to distract you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh. Look at the little conductor guy. He looks so cute. He's just like, I'm just sitting here. I'm about to go use the train. He's, he's got a cow train. Cow train. Look at that. These beautiful, beautiful this is, sprites. This is my job now. This is my job. I'm a train conductor on a cow train. I'm going to drive. Here we go. <laughs> I, like he's, I like how he starts bobbing. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. He's probably just making the train sound. Woo woo! Chug 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 woo woo! Goodness gracious, this game is pretty silly. <laughs> and that's flying bulls. This is probably as cute them up as we're gonna get for the games here. I guess those bulls mean no bullshit, eh? <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> that was terrible, I'll never do that again, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Alright, shooting the, uh, land here. Oh. It's a big tunnel entrance. Whoa! Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a crocodile! That ain't the cow train! That's a massive crocodile! Dude. Yes. Put both out of their misery! Jesus. Look this at that is all panda. sorts it's of mind fuckery. Tan. It's, it's just tanning. It's like, ah, oh, I'm gonna get my tan on. This Take is, a little nap. This is mind fuckery 101. A swimming kitty! What is this, Mother One? Jeez. <laughs> V8. Okay. Oh, man. Come on. Come on, man. It's like a V8 engine. Okay, I get... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and the swimming kitties. I Fucking get turtles. <laughs> Ugh. Every, like, every screen has a joke. And a pun in something. That's pretty amazing. Are those dancing weird mice things? Okay, wiener dog. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the people. <laughs> they just made some two guys reach out. Oh, oh fishing guys. <laughs> it makes me feel bad. Like, I'm sorry. I like that fishing guy that we just killed. He was just fishing on a shore, just throwing his fishing rod out. They're really making you feel bad there. I know. It's like, alright, I'm fishing right now. I'm gonna fish. Here we go. Goodness gracious, this game. This is just stupid. Stupid good. Stupid oh. hu stupid gag humor. Oh shit, it's Blastoise. Never mind, he's dead. Yeah, it's funny, you see these beautiful sprites and you're like, they only appear once and you're like, and kill it! Yep. <laughs> well, that's the nice thing about shmups is you just play them over and over. Yeah. <laughs> I like that of all the cute things you shoot, you technically do kill humans because you just killed a fishing, a fisher guy, and then you killed that married couple. Okay, Killing everything. Got, got some nice music. Let me turn this up oh, here. Oh, this is nice. Whoa, giant whale. Oh. 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 Man. All 
Did All right. Whale have a lobotomy or something? Just puking what various uh, things. I like that music, making all those little sounds. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm being trolled right now by watching this. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> It's just like, really? Really? A whale? I gotta kill this whale. Pester asks, how did they come up with this? I'm gonna guess many drunken nights. Yeah, I know, seriously. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they love drinking. I remember those hard partying shmup designers. Nah, this doesn't seem like Whoa. drug. This doesn't seem like drug humor. It seems like drunken humor. Yeah, yeah. It seems a lot more drunken because I imagine drunk could make like a lot of dumb puns. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Explosion. Yeah. Those explosions uh, are huge. They take up like the entire screen. All right, that's enough harmful park. All right. Okay. What Good times. Game? That's actually probably the only shmup in this entire collection that I know nothing about that game, but I've seen like gameplay videos. I'm like, oh, that looks neat, but. Yeah, hopefully I'll try it someday. Looks pretty fun. All right, I'll get you the link for Super Fantasy Zone. Super Fantasy Zone up next. Oh, this is one of my favorites. I love this game. Okay. Get you the one there. I love this game so much. Okay. Queuing it up. I got the link for Fantasy Zone. Super Fantasy Zone. Woo woo. All right. So, uh, Super Fantasy Zone. I know uh, you. Uh, Chibi, you have some stuff to say about this one. Do you want to preface this? Uh, yeah, a bit? sure. Love to. Okay. All right, now, before I actually introduce the game, but I'd just like to say something really quickly. Go for um, it. When a case of how uh, consoles were back in the day with the t case of 16-bit consoles, like, say, the Sega Genesis or the Mega Drive for the European viewers or Japanese viewers, or the TurboGrafx-16 or the Super Nintendo or Super Fanny, uh... For the case of how shmups would work being ported, either they could be either direct ports, or in the in the rare case, they were shmups that were only on the consoles. Super mm -hmm. Fantasy Zone is an odd case that it's already had previous games on the arcade, but this isn't a console exclusive game based for the on the same series. Now, what makes I think this game so cool and so great and so innovative is that I feel like Sega took some great measures to make sure that even though this would be a consoleized shmup. It would still be just as fun and challenging, but it would also have certain things that would work well for consoles. Instead of maybe just inserting credits and pushing whatever extra button for credits as much as you can, they really built this game around the idea of a console, and it works. I think this is very, this is a very well-made game. Great graphics, great soundtrack. I feel like Sega just really just hit a home run with this game. So you, you think? Uh... This is one, of, yeah. This is one of the cases where the console version is, is uh, pretty much as good as the ar an arcade. Yeah, an arcade, yeah. an arcade version of this possible game could be like it's just really well done. Right on, and uh, yep, this was also requested by uh, someone on the uh, SCG Weekly Twitter. Um, yeah, follow us on Twitter, by the way, and you can uh, definitely uh, help uh, impact uh, the stuff we decide to show on the uh, on the show here. So yeah, this is definitely requested and. Fantastic. So, uh, well, at least fa Fantasy Zone was requested in, in general, so. It's awesome. I'll just let the game explain itself, because I think that's probably best, because games like these, yeah, they're just so innovative and wacky. I think uh, it's better to not know too much about it. <laughs> all right, I think, yep, I think we're good here. All right, we all ready? Okay. Yep. Yeah, sure. All right, three, two, one. Click and uh, yeah, yep. so this is a tool assisted, and uh, it's gonna be a 10 minute video or nine minutes completion, so it should be interesting. Love this game. Also, must note this shout out to the soundtrack, it's really catchy. Fancy zones always have good music. That's one of my favorite game tunes of all time, it's coming up in the next level. I'll uh, make a note of it once it comes out. Oh, cool. Yep. Oh, every other fantasy zone game, you just gotta shoot a, a couple of enemies in a certain order. A bunch of black balls that have the enemy pictures. You gotta shoot them in the get box. Seriously? Game pretty interesting. He has a weird bullet pattern, but he's pretty easy. Here we go. Fuck this song right here. This song? Okay, cool. Oh, 
Now we have the shop system. This is a console exclusive. Well, it's in the arcade games, but the way this works for the console, it's very So you broke up there, TB. I'm saying I love this song, and I was explaining oh, okay. the shop system and how this works exclusively for the console version. The shop is in the arcade game as well, but I think this works really well for the console version. Destroyed that boss with no problem. Let's move on. <laughs> this is Tool Assist again. <laughs> yeah, second level, that has my favorite music in the entire game. It's good good soundtrack. <laughs> we got to hear for the total of like 15 seconds. <laughs> okay, it's the last one through. Yeah. Wow. Oh, Jesus. Look at him go. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I love. <laughs> I like level Opo. Oh, oh, I love that he has feet. So whenever he's on the ground, he can just walk. He doesn't have yeah. to float. Dude, that fish does not look happy to be alive. <laughs> he's like, you're, you're tool assisting right now, huh? Kill me. Kill me. Oh, dang. But no. this is a good way of how to showcase the game. Dude, he's just going nuts. Risk cave. Oh, this is very for this level, it's a dark level where you have a little flashlight with you, but Ooh. that's only it. You can't see anything else. I love dark levels. I know. Especially for a shmup, that's really ballsy. Nice. There we go. Full light. It's lost, though. Dun, 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 dun. That was oh. quick. Bam! Goodness. Goodness me. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> now we're in chocolate land. It yeah, looks like chocolate land. Grandious. Choco Mountain. Yep. Goodness, the tea. Bubble the mountain. Yep, so Fantasy Zone's awesome. Yeah, um, pretty cool much the first game to have uh, the shop system. Uh, and, it also, and it pretty much uh, inspired many other shmups that, to use shop systems as well. Yeah, it is. It pretty much, yeah, pretty much pioneered the, sh the shop system. I like that Sega really didn't just to make a cute game with, like, neat graphics. It just really, like, they really tried to make a whole bunch of stuff with the game. Also, I like that the graphics in the game aren't exactly cute. They're just really far out and trippy. I like that. Yeah. There's well, there's a, very it, few cute em ups where it's just, it's more trippy than cute. In fact, I think the only cute thing is Opa Opa itself. Well, I mean, I don't know. Those, those lobsters have eyes and yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's true. Like, it, it does look cartoony. Yeah, it does, but I'm just saying, this looks... I love the background of this level, especially. It's so pretty. Yeah. The big rainbow, the bubbles, that's so pretty. It is nice. I think it showed off the Genesis capability, because, <laughs> man, th these colors on the Genesis, this is impressive. Yeah, this does look really good for a Genesis game. I will say, I will agree to that. Oh, here we go. This looks like Space Area. Yeah. Lost Rush. Go. Literally. It's done. Rush that boss. Oh, this guy. If only you could play like this in in real life. <laughs> You'd yeah. be a badass. <laughs> Look at how he's just kissing right off that fish. <laughs> he's kissing kiss, it. Kiss the fish. Kiss, kiss the fish. fish. Oh, love you, fish. I'm gonna kiss you by shooting bullets in your face. That's truly the best way to kiss somebody. Get a get a get an airship like an Opa Opa, and then just shoot them with it. Like that's my kissing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that Aurora Borealis in the background. Also... Later, Blocko. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Just the official name, Blocko. No, I just made it up. Oh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. Well, thankfully, because it's tool assisted, we'll be able to see the whole game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh, how annoying. Oh, man. Oh, dang. Oh, man. Oh, you have to kill your own father. <laughs> father. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Look at that background. It's all wavy. Oh, no. Getting sucked up. Oh. 
Oh, that's a black hole. Yep. That level's kind of dark for fantasy zone, jeez. Yeah, it's my twisted dark fantasy zone. Oh, I see what you did there. Oh. Shots fired. Use some Japanese for anybody that can read that. Just go. Ahead. And there was the great tool-assisted man who went and drug the <laughs> land. <laughs> you <laughs> broke this game. This guy in fantasy zone, jeez. What is this? I'm a giant cloaked guy with big hands, and I'm in the sky and stuff. Alright, uh... What else is happening here? Yeah, what else? We got slated up? Oh, right. Oh, this is a long ending, holy crap. It's, it's, there's like four more minutes of ending, jeez. It's like half of the, the run. <laughs> yeah. You killed all of us, boy! You're just... Cool. All right. So next up is uh, Game Ten, Game Ten Goku, the Game Paradise. Oh yeah, uh, this is a Jalico shmup, and you're gonna oh, see yeah. lots of cool um, Jalico references. Yeah, from the candy cabs, you know, and uh, yeah. Yeah, game ten in game ten Goku. Uh, basically, you got a game where this arcade operator girl, uh, she works at an arcade, but one one day, like the uh, like the bad guy in one of the arcade games, basically uh, like kidnaps her or something. Or, I, I don't know. What, I don't know what exactly. Yeah, it's pretty, but, in it's pretty interesting. But like, she goes into the game, and uh, so you got like a lot of kind of fourth wall breaking stuff in there. And All a right. lot of references to the game's company, because yeah, Jellico, there's a lot of Jellico references in this game. This is one that I'll especially be talking over, because I love me some Jellico. Yeah. Alright, oh, right, well, let's just get right into it, because uh, we are getting pretty long in the episode now. Alright. <clears throat> yeah, let's do it. Sure. Right, actually, uh... Fire away. I gotta capture the screen region once more here. Sure, sure. Okay. Sure. Give me a moment. <clears throat> Okay, so it is full screen here. Do do do. All right, here we go. All right, three, two, one, click. All right. Go, Jellico. Yeah, Jellico. <laughs> Voice acting in my schmucks, what is this? Yeah, I wanna go to a game center. I'm in I'm I'm in my converted garage as a man cave, so all my games are in here and it's apropos that I'm doing this in Game Center Man Cave. Oh dang, yeah. Yeah. I'm looking I like at that she, I like that she has screen cleaner. She's about to clean all the screens. That is so cool. Oh forgot to switch the chat again. <laughs> Seriously though, game, voice acting oh. in video games, what is this? Those are uh, Jalico Pony Mark IVs. Yep. So this game came out in uh, 1995, uh, upgraded on the Sega Saturn in 1997. I think this is the Sega Saturn version. Oh, snap. Um, in the YouTube video, they're saying uh, it was uh, um, Jalico's answer to uh, the Parodius series. So, huh. uh... And apparently it references uh, many games, including uh, Exerion, Plus Alpha, Butasan, Momoko, uh, 120%, Formation Z, uh, Suki Pai, and even Super EDF, Dead Dance, Ninja Kun, and all sorts of stuff. So. Oh, wow. I thought the Dead Dance reference was really interesting, because yeah. uh, you'll see it in the first level, I'll point it out. Oh, nice For show. you Mahjong fans, that's a Suchi Pai is uh, their Mahjong game. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Yes, a character to make a shmup out of, out of anything is a Mahjong game. Alright, I'm gonna turn up yeah. the music for this uh, this vocal song. Yeah, maybe you'll see some Mahjong Weekly coming up soon. Oh, jeez. <laughs> no. Game Paradise.
Pig. <laughs> Pig. Piggy. Hold up, Foundry, 20%. Woo! Cane Molly. Woo! Oh, God. Wow, this is extended, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's really nice. This is really nice. Like an anime opening. What is this? A game or an anime? Jeez. <laughs> look at, look like at video the video games. Watch cartoons. Sakura blossoms. I love Sakura blossoms. Better, whatever. Even the gu <laughs> the guitar solo. <laughs> uh. All right, that was awesome. Nice. Right, I'm reduce nice. the volume here. Right, I actually made a cool. mistake when I mentioned the characters. I didn't mean Wonder Momo. That's a Namco game. What I meant was Momoko 120 percent. That's a Jelly game. Right, right. And we get to select our characters. Plus right. Alpha. Oh yeah. Mecca, the pig guy, Momoko, hey! Maybe in every stage, if you play as Momoko, she'll grow a little bit, because, you know, she ages in Momoko 120%. She's a kindergarten that. kid, then she's a middle school kid, then she's a high school kid by the end of the game. I think you're, uh, like, five seconds ahead, by the way. I'm at, uh, 402. Okay, okay. So I'll just adjust that, if you will. Sure, sure, sure. 408. Sure, 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 no problem. There's a saucer. Nice. Just yeah, this UFO. game's super hard, isn't it? Right? I've tried playing it in MAME, and I'm like, Ugh! Yeah, I've played the MAME version of this game, too. Yeah, it is kind of tough. It's incredibly yeah. difficult. <laughs> we apologize for the cutscenes, guys. We promise there, 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 yeah. is some, there is some gameplay to this anime. I mean, video game. This is cool. I know, it is. It's like, it's like what is this? It's like it's an actual TV show or something. Quite upgraded. I know, seriously. There's like full cutscenes oh, in everything. Oh yeah, I forgot that they have like these scenes too. Maybe. Oh jeez. Oh, uh, we have to wait for this. Yeah. Aww, cute. <laughs> hey look, it's a chibi UFO over there. Oh jeez, I see what you did there. <laughs> yeah. Oh look at the pig, he's so cute. I like how he talks through his snout. It's like, what is this? That's what? really how animals would talk. They'd talk through their snouts, not through their mouths or anything. That would only make sense. <laughs> uh, oh, man. I like how a robot's just like, oh, whatever, I'm a chibi version of a robot, but I'm just standing here. I'm not going to say much. Just standing here. Oh my god, this is amazing. Seriously, it's like, what is this? They're just going on and on here. Up, and they're all chimified and they're talking. It's like, hey, what's up? What you doing? Oh, not much. What you doing? Not much. Don't want to go shoot things? Okay, sure, whatever. <laughs> the, uh, the YouTube video that I got here has, like, a lot of information about this game in the description. Oh, that's really like, cool. Like, it goes on for, like, five paragraphs, like, big paragraphs. Yes, I, I, I don't mean to... I'm not trying to spoil or anything, but I'm just checking the little timeline thing when you hover your mouse over the play bar. There's, like, two more minutes of this cutscene, then it gets really? to gameplay, like, at All nine. Right, let's just go ahead, then. Let's, <laughs> let's just go to the gameplay, then. All right, let's find a time, then. Uh, about, uh, hold on. It's about... Oh my God, wow. Uh, nine, let's go to 9... Nine, 10. Right, let's go to 9.20. Okay, 9.20? Yeah. <laughs> let's get this. Let's get this gameplay in here. Oh, uh, Jellico is a portmanteau of like Sega, like service games. It's known as Japanese oh. Leisure Corporation. If you can look oh, at wow. the uh, arcade cabinets, there is some gameplay of Dead Dance. That's a Super Nintendo exclusive game. I think that's kind of innovative that they made it look like an arcade game. Ooh, good Dead eye. Dead Dance also got a U.S. version. In Japan, it's called Dead Dance. In the U.S., it's called Tough Enough. 
It's actually called that, as dumb as it sounds. Yeah, Jelly Co. of America had some dumb names for some of the Jelly Co. games that came out over here. It's a little odd. I feel like those guys were a little bit of a try-too-hard, like... It's not so much that they pandered, but they also did, like, this thing where, like, hey, we really want, like, people of the 90s to notice this, so we'll put a bunch of dumb names on our games. Plus, Jellico of America made some really odd choices with how they'd port their games. They'd make some censorship parts. I mean, they'd censor certain games. They would remove certain parts about the game. I know the rushing beat games, the Super Nintendo, have had some very odd censorship issues. Hmm. There's a pinball machine. There's the evil dude himself, he's just kind of standing right there in the pinball machine. Yeah, I think you uh, went ahead of us mm. in the video. I'm at, I, I'm actually a bit behind, uh, I'm at ten, ten minutes. I'll pause and I'll wait for you, don't worry about it. Alright, well I'm at ten minutes. Alright. There's a few other little games in the arcade cabinet that you may be able to see. Some are Famicom games and a few other things too. Yeah, I like that the uh, point items are uh, <clears throat> the uh, eggplants. Well, I think they're, yeah, eggplants and coins, I think. But mostly eggplants. So yeah, the scoring system in this one, like, you have to collect the eggplants in, in succession. And if you do that, uh, you can get uh, uh, the big point value eggplants, which is like 48,000 or whatever there. Basically, you just have to grab a whole bunch at once. Yeah. I'm at 1034, by the way. Right, I'm at ten. I'm at ten forty nine, fifty. Right, I can jump ahead. Jump ahead a bit. Okay. Ten fifty four, fifty five. And here's a little. Here's a little in joke, by the way, when it comes to the ten fifty section. Uh, coming up, there's gonna be a box art cover, and it's gonna be one of the most hilarious things ever. It's. Oh man. Actually, we already passed it, but you might have saw a box art. Oh. Okay. So you might so you already... killed an arm wrestling machine. <laughs> and the uh, box art was uh, tough enough, the US version specifically, which I find to be odd that this is a Japanese game. I find that to be kind of funny. They're just throwing in all sorts of references. Yeah, especially since, well, oddly enough, speaking of Jolly Co. of America, Jolly Co. of America, for a lot of their games, had some terrible box art. If you guys want a good laugh, go to GameFAQs. And go look up any Jellico game and look at the American boxer cover. But a lot of it's really terrible. I, it's it's just hilarious. It's so weird. All right, let's fast forward to a certain point and uh, let's do a countdown this time. Okay. Uh, 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 Gameplay starts at about uh, three sixteen. You mean thirteen sixteen? Uh, yeah, at three sixteen. Thirteen right, sixteen. Excuse count, me. Okay, let's get to that and count down from there. Okay. Okay. Let me know when you're ready. Ready. All right. All right. Three, two, one. Click. All right. Here we go. Next one. Yeah, it's like look at this game center. It's just like a Japanese game center. Yeah, I got like literally all these rows of arcade games, some train games, some pinball games. Now, now I think are they in like a catcher now? Is that where uh, they're at? If you guys can notice the background of these little plush dolls, you look really closely. That girl with the pink hair, she's also from a Jellico game. That's from a uh, what's that game called? Uh, wow, am I forgetting right now? Hold on, it's Rodland. That's what it's called. Rodland. Oh, oh Rodland. Oh, okay, yeah. You may think that game's familiar. That's because it's a Bubble Bobble clone where he plays these cute little fairy girls that beat up enemies with their magic wands. It's a fun little game for the arcade, the Amiga, the NES, uh, and a few other consoles too. Yeah, it's actually pretty good. I played it. I'd recommend it. It's a fun game. Duka, 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 duka. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> I love the voices in this part. Dang. 48,000? Yeah, a good majority of these plushies in this little background are of Rodland characters. I think that's pretty interesting. Oh, yeah, they all are, huh? The little bunnies, the pink little radishy peach things, the little girl with the pink hair, and a few other characters, yeah. Shoot him in the face. Actually, that girl you're shooting at also looks like a looks like the girl from Rodland. Look, she has her magic wand and everything, but it's a shoot a giant laser beam thing. Big ol' egg thing, just wham. Oh, I've never seen uh, uh, if that. Look at, uh, if you look at the player you're playing as, that little UFO ship thing, that's also a Jellico reference, because that's in an earlier Jellico game called Speeding. What's it called? 
D-Day. P-Day? No, D-Day. Oh, D-Day, gotcha. Oh, okay. The point of that game is you're a UFO ship and you have to shoot enemy tanks. It's pretty weird, actually. Like D-Day. <laughs> yeah, but literally, that's what it's called, D-Day. Pretty... <laughs> oh, man. It's a, shmup where, it's a shmup, but it doesn't play by much of the shmup rules. It, it's kind of nifty. I'd recommend it. It's on MAME, and uh, it's on the arcades and a few other things. It's, and the Famicom, I think. Plus. So, yeah, this boss is just... Ugh. That Who is, like, is she, is she a character, or...? No, I don't think so. I don't think I remember her uh, from okay. her. She's the plushy it, boss. Yep. You were a UFO in the UFO catcher. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so yep, that was Game Tengoku, the game Paradise. Yep. <laughs> As you can okay. see, it's pretty bizarre and full of game references. It's awesome. Yeah. I like how it went all out for game references. They even referenced some of the most obscure games they've ever made, and it's pretty interesting. Alright, so uh, we're approaching our final game of the showcase, and that is going to be Plus Alpha. Um, oh, fantastic. Develop yeah, this game's impossible to find, like, in PCB form. Really? Ugh. Yeah. It's a, it's, a, it's a pretty decent little game. I, I'd recommend a little playthrough of it. Yeah, I, I love it myself. Best of shmups or cute em ups, but it's still, like, a real rock solid game. It's actually very good. Um, it's actually one I've one credit cleared myself. I was just gonna say, oh, Aquas, nice. you have a bit of history with this game too, oddly enough. Yeah, I quite I quite like it. It's uh, it's basically a right like a ride and cue 'em up type of game. Yeah. Kind of plays similar to a ride and game. Um, let's see what the hell am I doing here? Okay, I'm gonna get the video up. But uh, yeah, uh, so yeah, it's um. It's uh, developed by NMK, but co-developed with Jaleco, um, is what Chibi and I think. Um, well, at least Jaleco published it, but probably co-developed. Um, a lot of just uh, cute enemies, uh, vertical orientation as well. And, uh, I don't know. Uh, it's got a couple of these uh, female characters in the game, but you don't really learn too much about them. Um... They just sort of exist, just yeah, to kind of control the planes. They're and just, just kind of there you know, as characters. Fly yeah. around the area. Let's see. I'm kind of uh, fluttering here on my uh, production skills. Oh, don't worry about <laughs> it. You're doing fine. Oh, that was uh, it a little bit. Don't worry about it. Got a little sneak well, preview that's and okay. a little... Got a little preview taste of the music in this game, because I have to comment, this music in this game is pretty decent. No, yeah, it is, it is good. Uh, very, pretty very, solid. Yeah. There's a lot of really nice, catchy tunes. Very cheerful, very upbeat. Definitely. I especially like that boss music. It's quite catchy. The boss music is good. And uh, kind of a cool thing about this one as well. Um... When you beat the game, uh, when you do, when you do the loop, it has uh, loops. You actually start like three stages up in the game at fl at the flower town. Oh, that's um, pretty. Because I guess the first stages were maybe too easy, they thought, or something like that. But yeah, uh, and maybe they wanted to say like, oh, okay, well, we might change some stuff up for second loop, so we'll literally put you ahead or something like that. Yeah, mm. so it's kind of a, a neat little thing about the loop in this game, which I really like. Um, and uh, it does it does get uh, quite a bit more difficult in the loop as well. But the last boss is pretty much it's pretty dang difficult in this game. But other than that, like uh, it's pretty uh, manageable difficulty, and I think it's quite I think it's actually a very fun game. Uh, definitely try it out in Mame because that's pretty much the only place you're gonna play it. Yeah, yeah. Frenetic yeah. Said the PCB like, is pretty. You can rare. Ever, if you can ever really find a cabinet of this somewhere at anything, give it a shot. But if you can't, yeah, just why not? <laughs> yeah. Well, if I name and give it a shot, it's it's pretty decent. All right. Uh, let's get to uh, zero here, and uh, I think we'll just get right into this. All right. Okay. All right. Three, two, one. Click. Ah, uh, time for some more Jellico goodness. We got. Uh, I think it's like the second or third video we used from the main player YouTube account. So shout yeah. out to that guy. I'm gonna give him credit, yeah. of course. I'm already. I've been subscribed to this uh, person for a little while now, so I watch the videos and I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> so the the list here lists all the uh, enemies and the bosses that you find uh, in the stages. I like that. It gives game. a little like movie credits list, and as you can see, it's like a strip of film in the intro. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. 
like I said, more Jellico goodness, because yeah, I always found Jellico games to be odd, where it feels like they're trying to be, in, they're trying to not really rip off other companies, but they're inspired off other companies, but they'll still try to do their own thing with their games. I always found that to be interesting. Ready? Yeah, sadly, we have to cut uh, Sexy Proteus out of this episode. I can't make it can't be over two hours, sadly. That's yeah, okay. So, sorry for anyone who's expecting that. Like I said, we'll we'll revisit it in future episodes. Of yeah, next time, guys. There will yeah. always be a next time. Don't yeah. worry about it. Yeah. Yep. All right. So yeah, in this game, uh, like you, yeah. I mean, you have three different power ups, and uh, when you grab the po uh, different power up, it changes the uh, your ship into a plane, helicopter, or like a kind of. I think there's a jet type of plane as well. Yeah, I remember this. Yeah. And uh, so each one, uh, each one, uh, each power up or version of the plane can be then powered up. Um, up to like I think five, man, five times or so. But when you power up the main shot, that's actually a different power up. It looks like a uh, like it looks like a uh, like a shield power up. He's gonna uh, he's actually gonna grab one off of that that uh, pink guy they just killed. Um, that there it is by the hearts. You just grabbed it. Powers up the main shot. Um, and then also in this game, uh, your bombs are restocked at the end of every stage, uh, kind of similar to uh, Flying Shark, which is a really nice feature that I like in sh uh, shmups. And uh, really nice for uh, beginners as well because then you can't, you're not afraid to bomb. You can just bomb, and it's like you, you know, you, you have that lux, you have that uh, convenience or luxury to, um, you know, do that in the run. Um, so yeah, the and then uh, your bomb will also change depending on uh, what power up you're currently using as well. So one one of the bombs is a uh, like screen clearing uh, like line that kind of goes from the bottom to the top of the screen. Another one is a standard kind of Raiden-esque bomb, and then another one is a kind of big uh, beam which lasts for about six or seven, eh, about five seconds or so. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the basics to uh, Plus Alpha. Other than that, um, throughout the game you'll kind of see like these uh, fruit items that are on the ground, uh, and then here you can gra kind of grab those for some points. There's some uh, kind of secrets to this game I still don't understand yet. Um, this is a little bonus game that we got going on here. Basically, match the bodies. Yeah, if you can match a body, um, you get a bonus. Oh. If you get bonus. a skull on any of the, or yeah, if you get a skull, it's no good. And then your yeah. remaining bombs are used uh, in the bonus mini game as well. If you match, if you match one of them, I think one of them is a shot power up, and another one's a uh, special power up. I think, uh, I think special is like the size of your like middle beam, and then the shot power up is uh, like your other shot things. If we can match up for this part. Hopefully the least get oh, okay this is oh, it. Yeah, oh, get one. Oh, yeah, she got there shot up there. And then when yeah, okay, so we yeah, got the shot up there. <laughs> These two girl characters remind me of Kay and Yuri from Dirty Pair. I just thought of that right now. I'm just that I don't know why, it just looks like that to me. <laughs> On to the See next level. One of my favorite tracks of the game, by the way, is this song. Love this yeah, song. Yeah, nice. I'll turn it up a little bit. Very peach-like. So you got like, yeah, once again, you know, it's, since it's a cute em up you gotta have like these little yeah. guys that just have eyes and they look kinda yeah, cool. Yeah, I gotta have googly eye guys, gotta have the cute little voiceovers, gotta have all that stuff. Yeah, I, I do like the little uh, voices of the girls. You, to, you hear yeah. them occasionally. Every time you get a power up or you do a certain thing, they'll say something. Another little thing about this game is uh, in the stages, occasionally you'll fly over a section or a part of the stage, and there'll be like this little guy that gets unveiled. There, he, he's unveiling it a little bit. If you fly over that that little guy, the little squid there in the water, repeatedly, uh -huh. eventually he'll become fully unveiled, and you'll get bonus points. Nice. There's there's some secrets to this game I don't fully understand yet that that I, I believe is connected to uh, unveiling them. Like I think. There's something to do with like unveiling them, and uh, and uh, it, it will actually influence uh, if a one-up item will appear. There's also a special power-up item, which is actually a special weapon, uh, which is like a it's kind of like a um a big a big la it's just like a big laser basically that you can get. Um, it very rarely appears in the game for me, but uh, it's really powerful and. Uh, Basically, you're pretty lucky if you find it. I've also uh, had a credit in this game. I got uh, like seven one-ups. Nice. <laughs> like 
uh, one-up items that appeared, like the, where, where fruit items are supposed to be, and I have no idea how I triggered that, so if anybody has any idea what that was about, um, I, I found like six one-ups, so it was really weird. But uh, yeah, so there's definitely some secrets to this game that uh, I still don't understand, and I think uh, it'd be nice yeah, if I can know. Yeah, it'd be a little odd where that, it looks like a simpleton little shoot em up where it doesn't seem like it does too much for the subgenre, but actually it has a lot of really odd, uh, really odd strategy to it. It's very bizarre. Alright. We're gonna have to wrap up the episode in the next couple minutes, actually. Because right. uh, we're approaching two hours, and I uh, can't upload it if it's more than two hours. The bosses in this game are quite rough for a, for a queue to up. The bosses are, yeah, they can be rough, especially the but fire the dragon. The main can be pretty, actually, easy once you just kind of go through it. But the bosses are, yeah, some of them get really kind of almost bullet hellish. Spout, spout out a bunch of bullets, you gotta kind of dodge everything and be careful. Yeah, it kind of does become like that, huh? Alright. Now comes my favorite song of the game. My actual favorite song. Do 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 do. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we're gonna have to wrap it up, sadly. But uh, yeah, this is Plus Alpha. It's pretty cool. <laughs> it's got some good music and stuff. Um, the graphics, all the flowers, the petals. Yeah, I'll keep that playing in the background, but, uh, yep, so we're going to have to wrap it up. Uh, so, yeah, this has been uh, the Cute'em Up Showcase on SCG Weekly for episode number 31. And, yeah, thank you, Chibi UFO, for coming on and uh, talking about some uh, Cute'em Ups. It's been great oh, having you on again. Thank you so much for inviting me. I appreciate it. Yep, it was a lot of fun, and uh, and we are going to have uh, Chibi on again for uh, Thunder Force uh, Thunder Force episode, which will happen maybe in a few weeks or so. Um, so yeah, look forward to that. I, I know you want to do that, Chibi. So. Oh yeah, really love those games. <laughs> Great soundtracks and fanatic gameplay. Seriously. So if you're a fan of Chibi UFO, come back for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, so, uh, basically the moral here is, uh, try out some, play some of these cute em ups they're fun games, uh, there's a lot of them, and, uh, it's just, they're generally, uh, really laid back and tend to be pretty fun games, and some of them are pretty difficult, too, but, yeah. uh, I think you can... Really just yeah. enjoy the games, just enjoy them, you know, play them, enjoy them, and just soak it in, the music, the graphics, all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, I suspect maybe we should have, like, a... Cute em up STG, we you know like tournament yeah, totally. or something. Yeah, totally do that. Know? Seriously, get like tournament. a whole bunch of really good cute em up games and just do that. Cause uh, yeah, good gameplay, good graphics, great soundtrack. Seriously, good stuff. All right, well that's gonna do it for the episode. So, yep. Uh, thanks everyone, and uh, we'll catch you next week. Take it easy, guys. Bye bye.